Everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented and gorgeous actor, writer, director, and now Amazon best-selling author, Gabrielle Stone. Hello and welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. My God, you're so gorgeous. Okay, so let me introduce yeah. you to everybody. Um, this is my cool, outrageous you're man about town co-host. Me to guy. Yes, because th- there's people tuning in that are her fans that don't even watch our show. They don't know who you are. So I'm introducing well, you to other people. Well, fuck them. I do <laughs> So this is my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Ron Russell. Hi. So nice to meet you for the first time in my life, Gabriella. <laughs> Hello, I was only with her last week at the premiere of Blind. Uh, uh, yes. then, then we have, uh, this is Eileen Shapiro. She's my business partner in World Star PR. She's also a New York Times bestselling author and rock star journalist. Hi. Hi. I love Hi. Being- I love the name of your book. I love that name so much that I automatically yeah. love you. Well, tell us. Dear. Hold on. We, we're going to get to that. We got to say hi to our engineers. We have uh, Danielle. She's in Wellington, Florida. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, hello. goodbye. Then we have, uh, then we have uh, uh, Scotty J from Rock Titan TV. He's hi, in Pennsylvania. Hi, Gab, you look fab. Gabriel. Wow, we're like all over the world. I love it. Yes, we're all, and we have a chat room filled with people. Say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everyone in the chat room. Yay! All right, you guys. Wait, actually, Gabriella, you're right now in 178 different countries in the world, and over 5 million people are watching. So, no pressure. No no pressure. pressure. No pressure. Just show a lot of cleavage. They'll forgive anything. So you guys, Gabrielle yeah, not, does. I don't have that much to show. <laughs> oh, my God. You're like so incredibly that's like, not, gorgeous. That's not true. So listen, <laughs> listen, you guys, Ron and I met Gabrielle originally the first time. Um, she was on the set uh, of Killer Rose with uh, Killer Felissa Rose. Rose and Caroline Williams. And we went to the set and Sadie Katz was there. My Sadie. And, and Ron Sadie. did a little interview with her. And I was so jealous yes. because I was like, how come he's the one who gets to do the interview? She's like fabulous. Because I'm the better <laughs> interviewer. That's fine. <laughs> And then we saw her at the blind premiere. Right, Gabby. And now she's got a book. We're going to talk about a lot of different things, but I want to make sure we get the stuff in about her book because. Oh, wait, before we go there, I want to tell everybody you know, we know so many celebrities out there who really suck. A lot of them are so <laughs> full of shit, you want to smack them around. This gal is so nice, so sweet, so real. You're going to love her. And I'm sure her book has got her in it as real. So you're not going to read some phony baloney shit about how lovely she is and she was born on a cloud and her mother was Jesus and her father was Moses. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Actually, Quite the opposite. The, right. the name of the book, because uh, we we watched the interview today on Good Morning La La Land or whatever that, that oh, La La Land. Uh, yeah. So the name of the book is Eat, Pray, FML, you guys. You can go to eatprayfml.com. You tell, I want you to tell everybody what that stands for, because yeah. I think, and you can say it, so it's good. We don't bleep Great, it. Great, because that's, that's really what it, that's really what the title is. I just couldn't say the F word in it. So it really is Eat, Pray, Fuck My Life. And it's so accurate to the book and what happened to me in 2017. It just fit perfectly. Okay, so tell everybody, because this is cool. First of all, congratulations. When we saw you, I think the book had gone to number one on Amazon, which is very good. Because it's your first book, right? Yeah, it's my first book. I've, I've never considered myself a writer and definitely not an author. So it was crazy that this one's been received so well right off the bat. And all the pictures for it are great. Like all Thank your promotional you. photos and stuff are fabulous. I mean, you look great and everything. So tell everybody what happened to you and, and, and how did this book transpire? So basically in 2017, I found out that my husband of almost a year and a half was having an affair with a 19-year-old for six months. I filed for divorce, left. A few weeks later, I met a man and fell madly in love with each other. And he convinced me to go on a month-long trip to Italy with him. 48 hours before we were getting on a plane, he told me he needed to go by himself. And I was absolutely devastated, but I had a decision to make. And that was either stay at home and be heartbroken or say, fuck it and go travel Europe for a month by myself. So I took a backpack and no plans. And I went and did seven countries over the span of one month and then wrote a book about it. (laughs) I fucking love it. He had to be gay. Uh, No. (laughs) them are it must have you been never know some things. some queens can hide it well some queens can hide it well no seriously any guy that doesn't want to go to europe with you is gay i concur i mean give me a fucking break gabby i mean you're not exactly chopped liver okay 
Any guy that would say, I'm going alone, he, you know what? He probably hooked up with your husband and those two went to Europe. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? <laughs> what a vi- what a visual! So wait, how did you so how did you find out he was having an affair with an eighteen year old? Like you saw a text 19, message? Nineteen, nineteen. No, eighteen. Nineteen. She nineteen. Said. Oh, nineteen year old. Okay, did you uh, like see a text message or something, or how did it transpire? You know, there were like little things that started happening, and all of this is in the book. Um, but it was actually what did it was he was out of town on a work trip, and an email came through um, on the office computer that said he had Ubered to somewhere that he wasn't supposed to be. And that was all it took for me to look into the, like the trash email. (laughs) And let me tell you, like, I missed my calling as a private detective. Like I Harriet by that shit so hard. Um, That's how she is. (laughs) This is, she's the biggest dick in the world. (laughs) Oh my God. She goes out with a guy. She finds out everything everything about him. And, I mean, really, she go, she, go ahead, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> She's unbelievable. This one. Well, and and I've, I've never been that type of girl. I, I trusted my ex-husband to a fault, as it turned out. And, um, but let me tell you, once I found that first string, it was like all, all hell broke loose. Was your husband Greek? No. What was he? White. And <laughs> <laughs> White <and> boring. <laughs> no, but, 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 but like what country? Like where was his ancestry? Is he like is he like oh, I Irish, even, Swedish? I couldn't tell you. I could not even tell you. See that he's a mutt. Wow. How long? How long? He's a mutt. <laughs> you got rid of a mutt. No big deal. So how long did you guys date before you got married? Um. So he proposed after eight months, which was very fast, obviously. And then we were engaged for about two years before we got married. And then we were married for almost a year and a half when I found out about everything. So you we know were what? together for like five years. It wasn't like a that's short why. Time. That's why. That's why. After five years, the same old piece gets to be boring, and guys got to wander. You know, men are hunters. I mean, they all cheat. Like I told Jimmy, if I find out you cheat on me, I won't say a word of bad to you. I'll simply go out and cheat on you. <laughs> that's a gay yeah, thing. I, I, thing. Would, I just wanted to get out of the situation, and I'm so much happier no, that it that, happened the way that it did because no. I would have been stuck in that for a long no, time. First of all, listen to me. First of all, wait, wait, Gab, Gab, listen. Call her Gab- Gabrielle. No, I have nicknames for people I like, <laughs> and I and I like her, so she's my Gabby. Listen, <laughs> listen. You should have cheated on him and let him know. That would have got him really good, no matter what. And then left him. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, like, so much better than that. I agree. I, I, I had no reason to do that. I just wanted to get the fuck out and like move on. No, I, I would have said this guy I was with last night, his dick was bigger. He was better than you. You fucking limp cock, nothing piece of shit. <laughs> and then I would have left him. So first of all, you though, their own. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, though, like, like, although that was a terrible thing at the time, look how you've grown and, and your life has changed because of it. And now you, you you went on the trip. You had two bad things. We saw you at the blind premiere. And, and yeah, what would and- you think of the movie Blind? I actually was re- I had no idea what I was walking into. Um, and you never know with the horror films if they're going to be really great or really bad. Oh, and I was bad. really impressed. Yeah, it was yeah we were, too. The majority stink. Now, I know Sarah. Sarah has always been the piece of ass in every movie, you know, naked boobs and whatever. And I said to Jimmy driving in, I don't think Sarah's going to carry this movie. Well, let me tell you, 20 minutes into the film, Sarah's a damn good actress. And she did a fabulous job because she didn't do anything. And it's very hard not to act when you're acting. And I liked the storyline and I thought it could have been tighter. I think they could have tightened it up a bit. And definitely all of Caroline Williams' outtakes should have been put back in the film. I uh, wanted she, she was hysterical in it. I yeah, loved she was her. Hysterical. I wanted more of Caroline. But in I, the I was film. Tra- the reason I brought up the blind thing is because I was working the red carpet and you were with uh, we don't have to name him, but you were with a stunningly handsome, very tall you know, built butch guy. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. I know what the book is about. And she got rid of that one, but definitely she's not like sitting around like crying. I mean, no. look at this guy. He's like no. a freaking supermodel. No, when, no, when, I, when, I when I looked at him, I said, a oh, lucky bitch. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, lucky bitch, KB is. <laughs> I think one of you even said, is that the guy from the book? And I was like, yeah, I asked enough. that if that was the guy from the book. And, and, uh, and she anyway, was like, you no. look gorgeous that night. Sophisticated, simple. 
simple, sophisticated, but yet stunning. Thank you didn't you. you didn't go looking like some, you know, some of them that were there. I mean, really, these broads think because they show their pussies and nipples, they're going to get work in films. You know, girls, you only do. That's not my jam. Oh, we know it's not your jam. No, no, no. But he's all... talking about some of the others. Some of the oh, girls. You saw them. There was one there. She had on a silver lip. I don't know what it was, but it was a clit cover. There was nothing below that. <laughs> now. And, you know, she didn't wear panties. She had to keep swooshing the flies away. Oh, my God. <laughs> so hold on. We want to tell everybody. First of all, you guys, Eat, eat Pray, FML is what the book title says. Eat, Pray, Fuck My Life. You Can you, can you get it on your website? Uh, no, it's exclusively on Amazon. I mean, you can go to my website and it'll click. You can click to go and order it. But it's exclusively on Amazon in paperback and ebook. And so you guys, and Gabrielle Wait, is on. spelled G A B R I E L L E. Can you buy it on the electric book? What is that called? Kindle. Kindle. Can you buy yeah. it on Kindle? Yeah. What how much does it cost on Kindle? I think it's like four ninety nine. And if you're oh, part of like if you're part of the, yeah, and if you're part of the Nook, the Amazon's like Nook Club, I think it's free. But the paperback's my favorite. I've gotten a lot of messages that people are reading along with it and then they'll scroll back into my Instagram to try and like see what I'm talking about, about like the posts that I did. So I think that's fun. Um, and what, and what, is, what is, what is, what is your you're Instagram? If you are a snoop and a yenta and you like to get into people's personal business, buy this book. Four <laughs> nine, uh, wait, four ninety five is a Starbucks coffee. I mean, yeah. so, so go buy the book, do yourself a favor, and you'll get all the dirt you want to hear, you sleazy bastards. And you. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your Instagram? What's it? Is your Instagram Gabrielle Stone? Yeah, my I'm on Gab, uh, all platforms at Gabrielle Stone, and the book is at Eat Pray FML. Okay, there you go. So we'll come back and talk about the book. Now we want to talk. So everybody, Gabrielle, besides being an author, she's an, an actor, a writer, a director. Um, you guys have seen – one thing I find very cool about your career as an actress um, is because you've done a lot of horror movies, but you haven't pigeoned yourself a, a, into just horror, and you've done a lot of other kinds of really cool films, The Competition, Swell, The Jazz Funeral, and Old Man's Gold. You've got a whole bunch of great titles because you have a ton of things you've done, and you haven't been pigeonholed just as a horror actress, even though you're also in a lot of great horror movies. Um, is that a conscientious, was that a conscientious decision on your part? Yeah. I mean, I think especially because my mom is like known as one of the horror queens, um, that, that, um, originally I was very much pitched for, for horror films and I've done a lot of really great horror films, but I also turned down probably like one a month because the material's just not good. Um, so I really, if I'm going to do horror, it needs to be the right kind of horror. It needs to be a substantial, like unique script. Um, I don't like doing the slasher stuff as much. I ain't got the rack to do the, the, the topless running. Through good, the woods good, for you, good for you. Good for you. Good <laughs> um, for you. Good for you. But I also really love, I, I love drama and I love doing comedy. Like I had so much fun with Chris Klein on the set of the competition. It was such a ball. Um, so I definitely, I love doing all genres. It's just dependent on the material and if it speaks to me. So you actually, you mentioned. Wait, tell everyone who your mother is. Oh, that's what I was going to do. Okay. Oh, right. Um, my, mother is <laughs> my mother is D. Wallace, known from Cujo, The Howling, E.T., Halloween, all the other movies. The Frighteners, <laughs> The Hills Have Eyes, Rob Zombie's Halloween, Popcorn, She's in 10, yeah. Bo Derrick's 10, uh, Critters. I wrote a whole bunch of them down. And your mom, by the way, is just like you. She's lovely and she's very, very nice. I mean, she's very nice very to her nice. fans and everybody. Very I've met her a bunch of times and she's just charming as could yeah, be. I, and when I met her, yeah. what did I think? I didn't think she was your mother. <laughs> what, you thought we were sisters? I. Well, I didn't think, no, she's too young looking to be your mother. I didn't know exactly who she was. We were on the set. I think, where were we on the set? I don't when know we, met her? We, were. we were somewhere. And she, and she told me, no, I'm Gabrielle's mother. I said, what? Yeah. She's very young looking, your mother. You sure she's she your is. mother? She looks, she looks great. Um, but she had me when she was 40. She's, she's, what? she's definitely old enough to be my mom. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Your mother had you when she was 40? Yeah, she looks good. So what is your mother, 110? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, she can't, She looked 40 when I met her. Not He's 79, so. She, she would literally, she'd be like, bend over, I'll kiss it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm not lying to you. I cannot That's believe. Right. 
I cannot. So your mother, 40, say figure you're about 25. So 40, 50, 60. She's almost no, my baby, age. I'm 30. Mother. <laughs> so your mother's almost you. my age. She's in my, my league. I love yeah. it. So I'm wow. going to do some bragging to you guys. So Gabrielle's worked with a lot of cool people. And this is just something I like to do for the listeners if they're not familiar with you uh, to, to brag about some of the cool people you've worked with, of which a ton of these people have actually been guests on the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Um, but she's worked with Antonio Sabato Jr., Corbin Burns, and i got to put glasses on, Michael Madsen, which we just actually met, uh, Meg Foster, Lisa Wilcox, Christy Carlson Romero, who I, Romano, who I actually love, um, Tatum O'Neill, Christos Andrews, we just saw him at a book signing for a book I did at Barnes & Noble. He's been on the show with Thora Birch, Chris Klein, who's awesome, Maureen McCormick, Quentin Aaron, who uh, we met at a party in Florida, Tony Todd, Adrian Barbeau, Kane Hodder, Barbara Crampton, all these people have been on the show, Vernon Wells, Sid Haig, Felissa Rose, Billy Zane, Misha Barton, who I love, James Morrison, Bobby Campos, who we met a long time ago, and Grant Kramer, who is um, uh, Killer Clowns, whose mom is your Terry, friend. Terry Moore, yes. who's my buddy. <laughs> So congratulations on what a stellar career, great movies. Um, do you have a yeah. preference? Do you, do you like being in the horror movies? Because you, you, you have like kind of like a legacy there. Does yeah. that make it difficult? No, and hor horror fans are some of the most awesome Oil. group of fans that you can get. I, I love oh, doing Oil. horror. Um, but it's just it's just dependent on, on the material. But like I love shooting zombie killers. I'm still friends with a lot of the people that I met on that set. Um, Speak No Evil was one of my first like bigger leading roles um, that Lionsgate did, and that was an insanely awesome experience. So it's always fun to go get bloody, you know. I love it. Yeah, All right, I, Alina, uh, I just did two horror films. I finished, um, what is it called? They was used to, it was Circus Road with Sadie Katz, but they changed the title to Clown, Clown Fear. Clown Fear. And the other one was a Churchill film called Big Freaking Rat. Uh, Big Freaking Rat. And oh, yeah. So it, I found, you know, I'm, I ha hadn't worked in 30 years. I did television and movies years ago. And when I went on the set, I couldn't believe how they get away with it. I mean, the cameras, the no, no mocks, no rehearsals, nothing. <laughs> I mean, you just stand there like a moron and they tell you what to do like a robot. I said, well, when do we act? They said, you know, I don't want to read lines. So sometimes I just find it not to be for me. So now I'm like you. I'm not doing slashers. I'm not. I'm, although I've been asked into a. She'll couple. do a slasher if it's a good one and it's got no, a three million dollar budget. Want, no, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go into a movie that the only value is the, the looking at blood. No, I'm an actor. I'm not a, a butcher. But anyway, I feel that at my point in life, I don't give a shit. I don't have a career anymore. I'm a hundred. I'm doing it for the joy of it, and and I want to get in horror movies, but. Like Blind. I loved Blind. It's the best one I've seen out of all the junk I've seen. And I went to see some pips, and I think you were there, too. <laughs> I mean, some real, some real winners. We're not mentioning this. No, the, I have to mention the one, the space movie. What was that crappy thing? Oh, uh, I don't even know what it was oh called. Oh, my. Did you see that one? The, the space movie? <laughs> no, it was terrible. Anyway, oh hold my. on. I want to switch this around now. So Eileen has, has written, um, she has a New York Times bestselling book. She wrote the Star Trek. What did you write? Star Trek Medical Reference Manual. Star Trek. And then she has another book called? Precious little devil that we're turning that we just did a script oh, for. We're going to turn it into a movie. Um, Thank we're you. Turn so, as an author and a, uh, to a, from a best-selling author to a best-selling author, ask her some questions. You're a journalist. You know what? Forget about being an author. I want to know if you're happy now. Are, are you seeing someone? Are you like stable? Because I, I want to know that first. Okay, so I'm very stable. I'm extremely happy. Um, this book was like therapy to me. So now to have it out into the world and to be getting the response that I've been getting from people and like the messages from people um, has been so fulfilling. And I'm so happy in my soul and in myself that I don't need other people. Um, but yeah, there's there's some special people in my life and we'll see where things go with that. I love All right, it. now. I don't like that answer. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew you wouldn't like it. It's like I answer. want all the dirt. I he wants no, it. No, no, no. No, wait, let, wait, let her ask her next question. No, I want to ask you one question, then she can have the floor. The That'll guy, never happen, the, the just guy, so you know. The guy that you're dating, do you tongue kiss him? <laughs> I, as opposed to, like, non-tonguing? Yeah, of? yeah. Like, what, what's the point of that? Well, non-tonguing. Does that answer your question? <laughs> well, no, non-tonguing is like, I like you, but not terrific. Tongue kissing oh, is no, like. No, no, I, no one has time for that. 
<laughs> for what? For just for, for like for just a peck on the cheek kiss. So the so that gorgeous hunk we were with, you were with. We can assume you is your boyfriend. I don't know about I, I don't we don't do labels, but he's he's a special guy. So there we'll you see. Go. That works. He, he is one cutie pie. Let me tell he you. He is gorgeous. I know. <laughs> and you're gorgeous. So you guys make like the perfect, like gorgeous uh, for wherever you guys are at in your relationship, a gorgeous couple. And if he yeah. and if that guy were gay, I would dump Jimmy Starr in a second. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eileen, your turn. So here's my next question. The ex-husband and the yeah. ex-boyfriend. What do they think about your book? Do you know? Um, I haven't heard from my ex-husband yet. I hope I don't. Um <laughs> He, look, I wish nothing bad on him nor his girlfriend. Um, I am very thankful for my marriage and everything it taught me. And I'm damn sure thankful that I'm not in it anymore. Um, and at this point, and even very closely after we split, I was so detached from it right away because I knew it was what was happening for a reason and how happy I was going to be on the other side of it. He's kind of just the character in my story now. Like, that's how I view him. <laughs> um, so, you know, Godspeed. I like that. Um, I like that too. Good for you. My, my ex-boyfriend, um, he's actually been very, very supportive about the whole book. Um, he, as well as his family signed a release for me to be able to include a lot of the stuff that I did. Um, he's been really supportive. Um, and I, I've been very thankful for that because I do care a lot about him and his family. And I don't know if I would have been able to really like put this out the way that I did um, without having their blessing. So he's been great. Now, did you ever find out why he went alone? Why he had yeah, to go so alone? The, yeah, the backstory on him, and this is all in the book, obviously, but um, his um, one of his family members died a year and a half before he and I met. And when he fell in love with me, I think a lot of that grief that he had pushed down kind of opened up and smacked him in the face. And he went through a really, really difficult emotional time during that. I mean, it wasn't like he was just like, bye, bitch, I'm going by myself. I mean, this conversation happened with him with tears streaming down his face. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me, but like, I just feel like I have to go by myself. It was all very, it was, I had a lot of compassion for what he's dealt with because I've dealt with a lot of grief in my life. I just happened to get caught in the fucking crossfire of it all and the timing was awful. <laughs> but um, there was it, there was a lot of depth to it that I talk about in the book. Let so me I, ask you a question. Oh, go ahead. I want to know if she, like, maybe she should give him another chance. I mean, well, if he was going through that. something. No, we the, never, no, no. You have to read, read the book, book first. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't believe in that. I know friends of mine that broke up and then a year later they went back. It was a disaster because in that year everyone grew up and changed. And now you go back thinking you're going to find the schmuck that you had before and, and he turns out to be a, a, a mean, no, 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 no. So did you, wait, so wait. you're Italian, right, Gabriella? No, I'm, no. I thought you were Italian. No. Gabriel Stone? French. Well, my name is Ron Russell. Where the fuck is that in Italy? <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Oh. No, I'm French, Dutch, Irish, German. Oh, okay. My children are Dutch and Italian. <laughs> but anyway, now I'm losing my mind and point. <laughs> okay, so I'll go on then. No, you're boring. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, what was I saying to? I forgot. Um, you said you're Italian, right? And she said no, and it blew your whole chain of train of thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I like a less. <laughs> not <laughs> really, food not really, not really, not really. Uh, I got it. Was I want to know? Did you self-publish this, or is it out with a publisher? I did. So we we shopped it around to some publishers, and the bigger ones that I liked that were interested wanted to refine a lot and change a lot of it, and it just didn't feel authentic for what I was trying to get out into the world. I also am a control freak and like was like, no, I want to do the cover. I want to do the promos. I want to make sure I know how, and you don't get to do that when you're right. with a publisher. So right. I decided, and time-wise, it would have been an additional like two years if I would have gone with a publisher. And my soul was like, 
fuck that. This needs to be out into the world. Um, so yeah, I self published. I think it's phenomenal that you did. Cause I went on Amazon and looked and I think you had like, you have like 38 five star reviews for a book that hasn't been out very long. That was self published. Yeah. I mean, I see books that are with big publishers that have five reviews on them. Like, so the fact that, you know, you've really created uh, a lot of hype around the book. I mean, I know you're doing a lot of interviews and everything, but I think that, that everything that you've done and doing it on your own is, is very, uh, Do you talk about your mother a lot. Um, I talk about her a bit. I mean, the beginning of the book definitely sets up, you know, I talk about my dad's death and um, things that kind of happened early on in my life that will clue people in and help them understand how I react to things in the future. Um, but the majority of the book goes from me finding out about the cheating all the way to the end of my Europe trip. So it's and which is literally, by the way, happened within the span of like three months. So I found out about the divorce or I found out about the cheating handed him the papers, met the next guy, fell in love, and took the Europe trip within those three months. Like, it was all compacted into that. Uh, how, 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 how many pages is your book? I have it right here. Let oh, show everybody. Oh, how yes. convenient. We show everybody. Show too, us so they the cover. See. Show us the cover, Gabriel. The cover's app. That's awesome. I like Eat, Vanna pray, White. FML. Vanna White for you. Yes, yes. definitely. <laughs> um, it is, I should know this, 280. And it's, it's a, a quick read. It's I a get quick messages. read, folks. It's yeah, I get messages read. all the time that's like, thanks, you fucked up my weekend. Like, I canceled all my shit and read it in two days. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 no. That, so, now, how did you great. come up? How, how did you come up with the title, uh, The Eat, Pray Part? Because, you know, that's like a Julia Roberts movie, Eat, Pray, Love. Yeah. Or, well, so well it's, it's, it's actually a book. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a satirical play on the, the infamous Eat, Pray, Love, obviously. But when um, my ex-boyfriend, who dumped me before the trip, when he dropped me off at my house after we had this big conversation, he was like, you know, how are you feeling, Gabs? And I was like, like, I'm about to go on a journey of Eat, Pray, Fuck My Life. And there's the title. And there's the like, title. Oh, my God, I love it. Yeah. Now, was this guy cute? <laughs> I mean, look who you're asking. Yeah, he was dreamy and hot oh, and from one, A one to like, ten. One to ten. Give me a score. One to ten. Like a 9.5. Wow. I can't imagine, though, anyway, that you're going out with anybody who isn't, like, gorgeous and intelligent. Because, like, I mean, gorgeous and like intelligent hang yeah. out You together. know what? You know what, Jimmy? You know what, Jimmy? Wrong. We know three ac horror actresses, and you know them, too. And their boyfriends are ugly son of a bitches. <laughs> oh my god! You know who I'm talking about? No, we're not. No, you're not going to mention. I'm not going to mention their names, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> the girls oh are the hottest pieces of ass in the world. They're beautiful girls with bodies of death, and the boyfriends look like they're in costume for a zombie movie. <laughs> oh but you know, a lot of the times it's about a lot more than that and what's on the personality inside. personality the, the deadly part about my ex was that it was both like he was hot and latin and could dance and was an actor and was also like a really genuinely great dude so it was i was fucked from the beginning of that situation you see if you ask eileen what's important in a man she'll say dick size <laughs> no <laughs> i would disagree no she's a, no, size, I'm a queen. size queen but she's a size queen <laughs> Every guy that Eileen dates, we get the, he's 20, oh, whatever his age is, he's this, he's that, he's a lawyer, da, 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 and he's got eight inches. I mean, no, it's, like, it's more oh like he's God. got eight, it's more like he's got eight inches and he's a lawyer and whatever it is he is. <laughs> she likes rock stars, so she's, she's like a, all she, about the rock stars. Do you love her hair? I did her hair all in rubber bands. <laughs> now, who else oh would wear God. a hairdo like That's that? That's actually true. <laughs> she's <laughs> She's like a crazy broad. We love her. She's my dearest, dearest, and most wonderful. She's friend. visiting us from New York. That's why she's here because yeah, we have I a PR it. company. She and, covers and, New York, and, and I have and California. And Eileen is somebody. She's not a threat to any woman. Women love her because she's just not a threat, and she likes women, and that's so important in her business because you. you I like everybody. No, women, but no, men, you know what? Whatever. Luella Luella Parsons was a bitch. Luella Parsons hated women. You know who Luella Parsons was. Nobody knows who will love She's the gossip lady, She was right? very famous in the 40s because Jane Russell told me stories. We have like one minute, so you got to uh, hurry Jane up. Jane Russell told me stories <laughs> about Luella Parsons. And Luella Parsons had a certain hate for Jane Russell like you can't believe. And I said to Jane Russell, why does she hate you so? No, I'm sorry. It was Hedda Hopper, not Luella Parsons. It was Hedda <laughs> Hopper. Uh, sorry. And, uh, wait. And I said, and I said, why did she hate you so much? And Jane Russell said, because I wore prettier hats. 
So <laughs> I, I said, I don't think that's the reason. You guys, then. anyway, we've got one minute. So everybody, this is Gabrielle Stone. Follow her book on Twitter. It's at P- Eat, Pray, FML. The website for the book is EatPrayFML.com. You can get the book on Amazon. Go to Amazon.com. Spell her name correctly. G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E-S-T-O-N-E. And then it's Eat, Pray, FML. You can follow her on Twitter at Gabrielle Stone. Um, her Instagram is at Gabrielle Stone. And her Facebook is at Gabrielle Stone Actress. There we go. Are you going to the the red carpet next week? What movie are we going? Xenophobia. To see? Xenophobia. No, I I go out of town on Friday, so I'm I'm gone for like a week and a half. And, and do you so have a? We have, we have like you. a half a minute. Do you have any book signings coming up? You want to like plug? I don't. Um, we just did like a big um release for it, but I I don't have any official signing set yet. But if people are interested in getting a signed copy, they can message me online, and I'll figure out a way to to accommodate that. Perfect. You got to love it. All right. So we wish you all the luck with it. All the luck in your film career. Thank you so much for coming on. You're gorgeous. We hope everything is turks out wonderful for you. Yeah. And I hope I hope the book sells a millions of copies. And I'll hug and I'll hug you the next time I see you. I'll give you a big hug. Thank you for coming on. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Gabriella. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. That was Gabrielle Stone and Michael Hansen. We had a great show. We want to thank Eileen Shapiro for joining us as a co-host today. Thank you. And we want to thank Danielle. And thanking her for bringing her sisters with her. And we want to thank Danielle and Scotty J. And we'll see you guys next week. Chat room, everybody. We're leaving. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye.